What is up everybody, Alex from WMD here, back at you again, and this time we're gonna talk about modulation, and in particular we're gonna talk about bipolar versus unipolar modulation, so envelopes versus oscillators or low frequency oscillators, LFOs, and when you might want to use one over the other. So let's just dive into it. All right, so you can see I've got this voice going here. I have a PDO and uh, the triple bipolar VCA, Javelin, Carbon. That's what we're gonna use for this demo. And we're going to modulate a couple different things and then we're probably gonna get into some drums to show a couple different use cases. I have the Modbox LFO here and then I have my Javelin. And so just to kind of demonstrate a few things real quick, we're just gonna run PDO into the Carbon straight up and we'll just listen to that, right? So modulation, right? That means to change. To modulate means to change something, right? And so when we modulate something, we're modulating parameters. When we're talking about this, we're talking about changing parameters, doing what we do with our hands, moving these knobs basically with CV, with another signal, right? So the most common thing that you'll end up doing, right, with an envelope is you just take the envelope out, run it into the cutoff frequency or FM of your filter, and then you take a rhythm from a sequencer, and you can rhythmically modulate that, right? You can go up and down, and we create the timbre that way, right? So one of the useful things about Javelin as an envelope is that it has a looping function, right? So you turn the loop on, and now it goes between attack and decay as a loop. So this is a sort of LFO, right? This is oscillating back and forth. Let's take a look at what's happening on data real quick. So I'm just gonna take out our envelope, turn this down, and you can see that with data, we've got this line right here in the, in the center, that's zero volts. So an envelope, most of the time, most envelopes are going to be positive only. And um, this is really great for things like filters or like drum modules where you want to have a starting point and then you wanna push up from that starting point and you wanna come back down, right? So with a filter, again, that sound we bring that back up, put that on gate, plug this back in, you can hear where we're starting, right? So if I take the envelope out, that's where our frequency cutoff is uh, positioned. And then when we add an envelope, we go up and back down to that point, right? And so looping envelopes are really nice for creating like um, asymmetrical waveforms, right? So something like this, it goes slow up pretty quick back down, but it's not a saw wave, right? This is skewed to one side. So if we go to like a longer range, right? There's some really nice drony kind of stuff with this type of envelope. So now, instead of using the uh, envelope, check out what happens when we use the mod box. See how we go down past that zero point? We're turning that knob down to the point where we can't even hear it anymore. And we're going up from there. So this is really nice when you have something that you want to send, like you want to center the frequency or the parameter, and then you want to be able to travel above it and below it, right? So a really good example for that is pitch and pitch modulation that you would do like with a modulation wheel. So that kind of wobble or like vibrato effect. So let's just listen to this like this, turn the resonance down a little bit. Let's go higher. There we go, that's a nice little thing, right? So we put this straight in to FM. And that's a really, really slow, really huge envelope, right? It's a little much. So we're gonna run this through an attenuator first because uh, the phase displacement oscillator doesn't have a attenuator over FM. Lots of modules do. Um, you, that's why having an attenuator is nice, just in case you need that, right? So now we'll turn that up a little bit. Right? 
So I'm thinking about stuff like this, right? Just real nice and chill. And what we're getting from that is a little bit of vibrato and we're going around that center pitch. There's our nice little wobble right there. And then yeah, you get crazy real quick, but just a little bit. It still sounds in tune because you're, vi you're vibratoing right around that center frequency and you're still hearing that center frequency happen. So let's do the same thing with an, on with, with an envelope, with the looping envelope. So this guy's looping right now. Let's turn this off. Let's make it faster and give it a little bit. There we go. So with this kind of modulation, we're not going around that zero point. We're not, we're going just up and down, right? So we're not gonna stay, make it faster. Right? This one doesn't sound as quite in tune because we're not modulating around that center point anymore. We're just going from zero up. And so the more you do that, the more of a, you know, like kind of wild siren effect you get. But when we just use a little bit of it, you kind of lose sight of your tuning, right? So that's a really good use case for using an LFO instead of a looping envelope, right? Looping envelope perfect for something like timbres where you want to start somewhere and go up and then come back down to that somewhere. Uh, LFOs really great for pitch where you're going to wobble around something. So let's do another uh, example real quick and we're going to do this one with drums. So for this example, I am going to just use the fracture clap module. And let's set the decay here, right? So right here, if we use like a looping envelope to change the decay, the decay will only ever get longer and come back to the center point, right? And when we're using, it's, it's, it's uh, worth saying when we're using something like this, the fracture is going to basically sample where the decay position was at when it gets that um, trigger to go off. So you can use dynamic um, uh, modulation like this and get some kind of cool random flavor as to like how much uh, decay is going to be coming in and out, right? So again, if that's too much, we'll change the level a little bit with Javelin. But the shortest where we're going to get is where the fracture's at, where the decay is set on fracture. So now if we use an LFO instead, wrong out, there we go. You can hear we're getting even shorter times and much longer times, right? And then, yeah, again, if we attenuate this, we can get a lot more controlled. Oh, wrong one again. There we go. So that's pretty nice, right? Because that is going to go negative and make our envelope even slower. Or faster, excuse me. But one of the things about this is that you set your decay at that bottom point, And when you're using an LFO, it's going to get shorter than maybe you had desired. So a lot of times using unipolar voltage for something like that is going to be um, just more desirable even if uh, it does accept that negative voltage, you know, and, and goes down past that zero point. Sometimes you're just gonna want to do that. So we're gonna do one more example, and this time we're gonna do it with offsets. We're just gonna show modulation with offsets. So there's a whole video on this, but you know, when it comes down to just talking about modulation, offsets are a huge thing. And again, 410 is really nice because of this, right? So 410, you have these faders here that you can use, if there's nothing plugged in on the input, you're gonna get an offset out. So we can use that for decay. And we can go from our zero point where the knob set, 
and then push it further, right? So we can set our, our zero point on the decay and then push up that amount remotely. So why would you wanna do something like that, right? Like you can just turn the knob and turn the knob back down. It's more about being precise and just being able to do something else. Like I like the idea of setting that, uh, that point and saying that's, the, that's like the shortest it's gonna be and then not having to find that again, right? So it's really nice to like add some energy to while you're playing, make it get a little bit longer, build up and when you wanna go back, you're right there. You throw this down to zero, that's hitting right there. All right, so that's it. I hope it gives you some ideas and just shows you a little bit of why you might wanna use an envelope, a looping envelope, or an LFO, or an offset for your modulation. Obviously, you can use sequencing as well, and um, there's tons of use cases for this, right? This is all just one. I'm hoping it just inspires you a little bit on how to use these modulation sources with your own modules, right? You can do this with samplers, you can do this with filters, you can do it with uh, timbre control on oscillators, FM amount, things like that. Those are really nice to be using these things and sometimes you're gonna want to go past that zero point on both sides and sometimes you wanna have that zero point and go from there. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. As always, please like and subscribe and we'll see you all next time. Peace.